number one the specialization that you choose won't necessarily be the one that you end up doing long term and this is a good thing i've seen it time and time again with people that i mentor is they have these grand plans of becoming ethical hackers or cloud security engineers so i design a roadmap specific for them to get them to their desired career but as they start studying and doing certifications they end up landing their first cyber security job now sometimes it ends up being the same specialization that they targeted which is a great thing but sometimes they end up in a completely different cyber security role and when i check on with them three months later six months later they end up loving it so much that they decide to specialize in whichever role they landed so this is definitely something i wish i knew because i was so fixated on one specialization that i wasn't able to see all the positives of my current job at the time which brings me to the second point the job itself is not as important as you think let me explain this one was really hard for me to accept i remember when i was working in a bank a few years ago i was a cyber security analyst but after i spent three maybe six months learning everything learning all the systems suddenly everything started to look repetitive and i started to get bored and every morning i was asking myself what am i doing with my life so what i did is on the weekends and after working hours i started studying for my ethical hacking certifications and as i was going through the training i ran into a popular tool called mimikatz which is a fascinating tool that's used to steal passwords stored in memory from windows servers but i got really curious i wanted to see who was this individual who managed to create this tool that's widely used they must be a renowned expert and i would really like to become a renowned expert myself so i started doing some research and i found that the tool was created by an individual called benjamin delpy but what was really fascinating is that he was also working in a bank doing a completely unrelated cyber security job to the tool which was extremely ironic i wanted to be this person but in reality i was already doing the same job that that person was doing in fact i was probably making even more money than him but that's when i realized something extremely important in my mind i think i was brainwashed into thinking that you can never do anything incredible or amazing unless you are working in somewhere like nasa or spacex trying to launch rocket otherwise you can never ever do anything incredible which is a really strange way to think about things i think i was limiting myself way too much because right then and there i realized that it was all up to me i could really learn anything i wanted now granted at the time there wasn't as many online courses and trainings available as there are today but still there was still enough for me to be able to learn and study and become an expert in whichever cyber security topic that i wanted but the funny thing is as i was making this video i looked up benjamin delpy again and looks like he's still having so much fun seems that he's working on hacking public transport cars and i'm sure this has nothing to do with his job and if you're curious he's still working in the same bank so for individuals who tell you you have to change job every three to six months maybe he's on to something maybe the job itself doesn't matter but what you do with your time is what makes all the difference which brings me to number three the truth about cyber security salaries but before we continue i want to thank the sponsor of this video bsa the software alliance they are currently launching a campaign to raise awareness against the dangers and risks of using unlicensed software which leads to many many cyber security problems the first one is when you actually download an unlicensed software or a pirated software more often than not that software comes with a nasty surprise such as a malware or a ransomware bundled within that software but not only that organizations who used unlicensed software run into another significant cyber security problem which is that this unlicensed software cannot be updated so any software that doesn't have a license will usually be missing significant and serious security updates and patches i remember when i was trying to help an organization respond to the WannaCry ransomware i found that they had a huge setup of windows servers and those windows servers had no license so they didn't have any security updates and therefore were all infected by the WannaCry ransomware all of which could have been avoided if they just used licensed software now if you come across any unlicensed software there is a quick and easy way to report this unlicensed software link which i will put in the description box below you can simply enter the details and submit the report and back to the video now salaries and cyber securities are really attractive there is a huge demand for experienced cyber security professionals and the demands will continue to increase for years to come but the truth is those high salaries come usually with experience i personally didn't stumble upon a high salary instead i've worked my way up by increasing my skills my experience and by doing practical certifications but it wasn't really linear it wasn't a result of me doing one certification that led to extremely high salary i think we are collectively brainwashed by the schooling system that if we have a piece of paper that piece of paper have to absolutely 
lead to a very high paying job which is why we're led to believe that doing this boot camp or doing this certification should absolutely guarantee you a six figure salary this is simply not true i keep getting asked this question all the time is this certification enough to land me a job you should be thinking of certifications as a structured way that you use to learn a subject and sure once you do it you will have more skills that you can later on demonstrate to an employer maybe you can use it to work your way up to doing higher level tasks maybe you get involved with more projects it should ideally lead to a better career and a better salary but it's not a guarantee and it's all about how you use the information that you learned in a certification number four health and relationships now in the past internet forum used to be the go-to place for any information so when i graduated from uni i was searching for which certifications to do and i found the forum that was popular at the time it's called tech exams so i've been a member there for a long time but i swear in the past every six to 18 months i'll see a strange post by someone who would tell us that they got a divorce because they've spent the last few years focusing on certifications working long hours and pouring their heart into a career that they ignored their spouse and ignored their health but also every now and then i'll hear horror stories about people who have gotten a stroke or who have a very unhealthy lifestyle because they focus too much on certifications and i'm not gonna lie a career in it can be stressful if you make it to be so that was the first wake up call that i've noticed but that wasn't enough trust me i was as stubborn as the next person so i wouldn't listen to anything and i was hyper focused on my career and my certifications that i personally neglected everything in my life but all of this had changed when i was assigned to a project at work at the time i was still trying to learn unix and get more experience with unix i wanted to learn how to secure unix and i got lucky i was assigned in a project where the company that i worked at had to fly in a very experienced individual who worked for semantic he was this unix security guru he was in his late 40s he was an absolute legend in the company that i worked at so i was over the moon with this opportunity the project was two weeks long and i had to spend long hours with him on site trying to install servers and configure them which was great because i got to learn so much from him but as we got to talking and we started going out for lunch breaks we usually went to fast food restaurants that were near the office around us and then slowly slowly he started to tell me how he feels stressed out how he was not happy with his lifestyle because he had to travel a lot between clients and he told me that he was not getting enough sleep because the constant travel was affecting his sleep cycle but he was also completely reliant on junk food and he low-key told me he was depressed which was a big realization for me because i was also starting to get slowly but surely depressed i was hyper focused on work and i was hyper focused on studying and i wasn't going to the gym and i've neglected my friends i've neglected my family which was extremely unhealthy and i guess this is the lesson that i wish i've learned earlier because some things are harder to reverse trust me if there is one thing i've learned is that if you sacrifice your health and well-being for career or for money you will end up with neither you will not have your health and you will not have your money and speaking of stress this leads me to number five do more worry less i wish i could slap my younger self because i used to worry all the time three two, two one, one. Give, okay all right here we go I used to worry about all of these imaginary situations that none of them end up happening. I used to constantly stress, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right career? Which certification is the best? Which one should I do first? Am I too old for this? Why is this other individual so ahead of me? It was crazy. I was driving myself insane and it was completely pointless. Seneca said we suffer more in imagination than in reality. And that pretty much summed up my mindset when I was a little bit younger. I want you to calm down and realize it's going to be okay. There is no one best path there is no one perfect certification instead i want you to approach things with the mindset of a scientist think of things as experiments let's say you want to learn ethical hacking great instead of worrying what's the best pathway pick one certification spend the next three to six months learning and then you will figure out is it the best path for you or not only you can answer that and the only way to answer that is not by worrying and asking endless questions but by doing the work spend some time with penetration testers spend evening studying and working on hacking and see maybe this is something you like or maybe you're passionate about something else there is only one way to find out and trust me reading endless posts on reddit is not the way so cut the noise and focus your time and energy on doing practical things on exploring things rather than worrying whether you are on the perfect path or not because the perfect path doesn't exist number six degrees don't matter as much as they used to this one is really painful for me to admit because i'm someone who took a lot of pride in my university 
university degrees I've spent so much time effort blood and tears in my undergraduate degree I've learned a lot of useful and useless things in the degree but if I'm completely honest with myself it was a gigantic waste of time and money I've spent endless time studying subjects from the electrical engineering and the electronics engineering world was it hard yes was it painful yes was any of it relevant to the real world absolutely not I think universities are extremely important if you're trying to be a doctor or a pharmacist or perhaps a lawyer but if you want to do anything tech related you can definitely do it without a degree but even if you want to do a degree choose something that's cheap and quick to do for example WGU University if you're in the US is extremely cost effective and time effective it will do the job you can finish it and move on can you work in cyber security without a degree absolutely yes now that doesn't mean it's easy but all I'm saying it's not impossible number seven certifications are not the end of your journey in fact they are the start of your journey if you watch my videos I usually give you a roadmap that will get you to land your first cyber security job in the cheapest and fastest way possible and usually within the roadmap I'll have a set of certifications that I recommend that you do but I recommend them because they give you a structured way to learn the subject of cyber security and hopefully to give you some practical skills that you can demonstrate in the interview that will help you to land your first cyber security job but what I want you to understand is certifications are not the end goal they should serve a purpose you should do them and move on I used to think that doing something like the OSCP or RHCE was the end all be all whilst yes those certifications have their value what I've learned today is that these certifications are nothing but a means for me to learn a subject what I want you to do is once you do them just park them forget about them and think of the next steps think of how you can grow your practical skills how you can do more projects that can demonstrate value to you and to the business that you're trying to help and if you're just starting out in cyber security and you want to add more practical projects to your CV then this is the video for you I have a list of practical projects that will give you more confidence so you can add them to your CV and hopefully land your first cyber security job and I'll see you there